Hello everyone and welcome to another science video with the Mass Dent Regional Library. I'm Miss Stephanie, one of the children's librarians here, and for this month's experiment we are going to make a balloon hovercraft. And this is going to deal with the science idea of friction, which is the force created when two objects are uh, move across each other to oppose the movement, and like it kind of stops them. And we're going to make this balloon hovercraft to show friction because right now, if we moved it across the table, there's friction between, or opposition between the CD and the table, but with the balloon blown up and there's some air, we can uh, reduce the friction and make a something that will glide across the table. And to do that, you'll just need a few materials around your house or place, and balloons are important. I would recommend getting three or four, just so in case one um, pops or something, you have another one on hand. And you'll need a top, like from a dish soap, or another container, another lid that just has a hole in it like this. And about this size is good or about this size would work as well. And then you will, I used a hot glue gun with some glue sticks. And if you don't have one on hand, super glue does work, but you're gonna have to let your hovercraft dry overnight before you use it. And then to decorate it, you can use some markers. You'll need a pencil. You'll need a piece of paper. Any piece of paper is fine, construction or computer paper. You'll need an old CD that you're not going to use anymore and a pair of scissors. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's get started on making your balloon hovercraft. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your paper and the CD, old CD that you have, and then you're going to trace the outline of it onto the white paper. So let me do that. Here's the outside, and this is a very important part. You want to also do the inside part. So let me finish tracing this. Then we're going to trace the inside part. And so it's going to look like this, as you can see. And then I'm not, I'm, you can use markers to decorate it. I'm not going to do too fancy of a decoration. I'm just going to put some lines on it real quick. And put some purple in there too. Okay, so I got a basic design on there. Put these aside. And now we're gonna wanna cut out this CD. And something we need to do is we also need to cut out the middle, which is a little tricky. So you want to have a sharp pencil and poke a hole in the center carefully, like I just did here. And then you'll use your scissors to cut the hole out carefully. So, and you guys can see. Maybe a little tricky, but because we want the air to go out to help um, the, the balloon hovercraft to go. So we're going to, there we go. We're almost done. And oops, oh, we got part of it. Let's get the other part. Oops. All right, there we go. We have a hole in the center and then we'll just cut out the outline. So I'm going to do that real quick. Here we go. All right, so we'll get this cut out and then we're gonna get the hot glue gun into here. Now, for this part, there's two things you're gonna to have to glue together. For the first part, you don't have to use the hot glue gun. I'm just using it because I already have it on hand. You can use it like a glue stick or Elmer's glue, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. I'm just gonna put a couple lines on here. And the great thing about the hot glue gun is it dries almost instantly, but just gives you just enough time to put it. So I put the outline on the CD and you wanna make sure it's on, not on the shiny side because the shiny side will help it glide. You want it to be on the kind of the duller side. So we have that. And since it's dry already, we're gonna glue the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the hot glue gun. And like I said before, if you do not have a hot glue gun, super glue does work very well. You just have to let it dry overnight so this will stay on your CD. So I'm just gonna do a quick line. All right, put a little bit more. I didn't put a lot on that side. And then press it down like this firmly and then should dry within a few seconds. And then to make sure it stays on, just lift it up by the cap and it's ready to go. So let's get our balloon and I'm gonna show you guys how to actually use the hovercraft now. 
All right, let's see our hovercraft in action. So as you can see, I've cleared off my table and I have my balloon right here. And I also have some other balloons on hand in case this one pops. So I'm gonna just stick them in my lab coat pocket for now. And the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to blow up your balloon. And be sure not to blow it too big because it could pop, but don't do it too small because there won't be enough air to help it glide across the surface. Because you see, it's not going very far right now, is it? But hopefully the air will reduce the friction or the force between the table and the CD and it will glide faster. And I do wanna know that, you know, so with science, even adults don't get it right the first time. And when I always like to do my experiments before I film them for you guys, and when I did, I it did not go very far. And that part of the reason why is because I had a cap that was not had did not have a big hole to release the air. So for the video, I'm hoping that this glider will go farther because I used a dish soap cap that had a bigger hole to it. So anyway, so let's get back to the balloon. I'm gonna blow it up. All right, this is a good size. It's not too big, not too small. And you're gonna to wanna to twist it because you're, it's gonna be very hard. You don't want the air to go out beforehand. Now, here's a part that I found a little tricky. And if you have an adult or a friend around, they can hold this steady for you as you put the balloon over the cap. So I'm putting it over right now. Having a little trouble, but I did get, uh-oh. This is why we get another balloon. So I busted a hole in this one. So let's try another one. All right, we'll twist this one and let's try again. Cause I need to get it over the hole. Okay, so we're getting it over carefully. All right, oh, it tore again. Let me try something else. I'm gonna pause. <laughs> and I'm going to try a different cap because I think I didn't cut this off enough and it is ripping the balloon as I'm trying to put it on it. So I'm going to pause and let's fix this problem. All right, so I glued another cap onto the CD. So let's see if this works better. I got my balloon. I'm going to blow it up. All right, we're going to twist it so the air doesn't come out. And then let's put it over the cap. Good, it fit. So let's put it in the middle and untwist it and see what happens. Well, it's moving around. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Um, not too far, but let's see what happens if I put more air in it. So I made the balloon a bit bigger this time. So let's put it back in the center and see if that'll go a little farther. Oh, there we go. Oh, it was picking up some steam at the end. So yeah. So, I mean, it didn't go too far for me, but that doesn't mean it will go far for you. So you just, the thing about science is you, you're never gonna get it right on the first time. And if you do, you're extremely lucky. So I would just suggest at home, like experiment with different size balloons, different size of balloons, different caps to put over the hole. Like see, try to get a bigger hole and just experiment and see if you can get your glider to go across the table. All right, I really hope you enjoyed making with your balloon hover, your balloon hovercraft and just to, Keep experimenting, seeing what works best for you, and see if you, how far you can get it to go. And to wrap up things today, I have two books that are about different types of balloons than the one we just did the experiment on. The first is about a hot air balloon. And this was a very hot, very important hot air balloon because it gave a family their freedom. And Flight for Freedom, The Wetzel Sky Daring Escape from East Germany. And it's by Kristen Fulton. And the history behind this is a little complicated, but basically... After World War II, the city of Berlin in Germany had a wall going through it with two sides, West Germany and East Germany. And West Germany was free. You could travel. You could speak how you wanted to speak. You could, like, publish books. But this, in East Germany, it was a lot more strict. You couldn't move around. You had, 
You couldn't read certain books, you couldn't do certain things, and you couldn't cross the wall leading to West Berlin. And they people tried to climb the wall, but soldiers were there and shot them so they couldn't get over. And the Wetzel family was getting, they wanted to have a better life for themselves and more freedom. So what they did was they secretly built a hot air balloon in the forest close to their home. And I just think this story is amazing because how they can cover up building a hot air balloon from the secret police is amazing. And on the third attempt, it did work, and they were able to go into West Germany and live a better life. And what is really neat is the author actually did talk to Gunther Wetzel, who was the father of the family and who was in charge of building this balloon. And it was a very interesting book. I highly recommend it for a good, true story about bravery. And the next book I have is Balloons Over Broadway, which is, this is a very different type of balloon. Like you may see on TV, the Macy's Day Parade and how that, all the big balloons in here. But we learn about Tony, Tony's right here. And he learned, like back then, that they didn't know how to make balloons, big balloons that would stay up. But he, because they would float away, they would pop, they would bump into things. But he figured out some techniques how to get them to stay up in the air so that people could walk them down the street for a parade. And it's a great story. And what I like best is the pictures. And they break down how he was able to do this. Like, he was a very intelligent man. And the pictures are a lot of fun, too, because you can see all the different types of balloons that he made. So I highly recommend Balloons Over Broadway. So thank you so much for joining me for this month's science video. I look forward to sharing more experiments with you soon. Have a good day. Bye.